Hi, I'm Dr. Sarah Steele. I'm a lecturer in social determinants of health here at the Centre for Primary Care and Public Health. I teach on both the MSc in Migration Culture Health and also I teach the upcoming BSc in the topic on reading, writing and researching in global health. I joined QM um, in January 2014, coming from the University of Cambridge. I'm actually a qualified lawyer, so I was teaching in law at the university um, there, and now I've moved here to the centre and I'm working on applying my research on immigration law in the context of global health. I'm Dr. Valentina Gallo, I'm a lecturer in epidemiology here, and I will be teaching introduction to epidemiology and statistics in the first year. My research area, I'm a neuroepidemiologist, which means that I'm trying to um, uh, doing some research on uh, determinants of uh, neurological diseases, um, uh, studying large populations. Um, for example, I'm looking at risk factors for Parkinson's disease, uh, looking at large population in Europe. Um, doing so, I'm looking at, say, for example, smoking uh, is protective uh, towards Parkinson's disease as uh, it has been found in some previous research and if so how it acts uh, in terms of protection and why it is protective. Medical anthropology is uh, the study of the social and cultural aspects of medicine and uh, one area that I've looked at is the role of traditional medical practitioners uh, particularly the role of traditional medical practices, not only the role of traditional medical practices, but the medical system they practice as well, particularly in the Himalayan region, in Tibet, in Nepal and in India. I've looked at the medical system they practice and the role of medical practitioners, traditional medical practitioners in these societies and how that role has changed over time. Uh, another area that I work in, particularly in the department here, is um, pharmaceuticals and access to medicine. So I've been involved in a big research, collaborative research project recently that looks at access to medicines, particularly six essential medicines in Uganda, South Africa and India. We've looked at the supply chain of these six different medicines and problems of access, so which communities are getting access to medicines and which communities are not getting access to these medicines and why. My name is Megan Clinch and I teach the undergraduate programme um, in Medicine, Health and Society and I will also be helping teach on the postgraduate programme on the med um, Health, Illness and Society. So I have a background in social anthropology um, and I look at, um, and I, I'm an ethnographer, and I look at um, situations um, where evidence doesn't quite work out or fit together in healthcare contexts. So I've looked at how doctors and patients negotiate diagnosis, and I've also started to look at um, experimental situations where researchers um, are trying to develop health interventions. So I'm particularly interested in difficult situations that arise in those two contexts. And because of that, um, I'm quite interested in how ethnographic research and social theory can feed back and help solve those problems in health research and clinical situations. So that also means I have a broader interest in um, forms of knowledge production and interdisciplinary research and why interdisciplinary research could be useful. So my name is Ilias, Ilias Kondelis. I'm the module lead for the Globalisation Health System module, which is a compulsory module for the MSc programme on, uh, on health systems and global policy. Uh, the module actually focuses on healthcare reform, uh, introducing the main concepts and theories uh, of economic analysis that have underpinned this global trend towards uh, healthcare reform. Um, the module also focuses on privatisation and marketisation policies uh, that affect healthcare systems, trying to evaluate the consequences of these policies with regards to equity, universal coverage and efficiency. My name is Nazi Malik and I'm studying the Global Health and Primary Care Programme here at Queen Mary. So our year is split into two semesters. We have the first semester where we all have four core modules that we study. Um, they include the Epi and Stats module, which I found really useful this year because it gave me a real breakdown of um, epidemiology and stats and it really showed me how to look at papers, how to analyse the information that I've been given to pick out what it is that I need to do and I think that's a really vital skill to have throughout kind of anybody's scientific career. Um, and then in contrast to that we also have a sociology and anthropology module which gives us a really good experience and 
um, perspective of illness and healthcare from a completely non-scientific well, well, non kind of view. My name is Rocky Kang and I am a master's student in global health and policy uh, here at Queen Mary. I think the location of our campus is um, really well situated. It's close to shops, it's close to um, the centre of London and so it's within walking distance of pubs, cafes, movie theatres um, and so there's a great variety of things to do all within walking distance. I think the diversity of this program in particular um, is really great and that we have so many students from such varying and vast back backgrounds um, and gaining that perspective is something that I think is very important with a program such like this. Other modules like health systems and economics, which gives us a big global picture of healthcare um, of today, of the past 50, 100 years and of the future. And then as we move into the second semester, we have um, a choice of four modules and we're given the freedom to choose whichever ones we feel we would benefit from the most, whatever we find most interesting. For this semester I've chosen to do medical ethics and um, advanced global health systems and they're quite different but I think that they complement each other really well and the lecturers that um, lead all of those modules are really great. They, they're all really supportive and they're all really helpful and always keen to answer any questions that we have. The teachers themselves are experts in their um, specific fields um, and the feedback that I've gotten with all the students is that the engagedness of um, the lecturers um, is a real strong suit. I really like the unit here and the programmes. Um, I think they're really, really interesting. I think they'll give students a really good grounding in kind of um, critical skills around um, public health, but also they've got very strong um, core component of applied research, um, which I think is really, really impressive because the, the, the team who teach reflects that kind of mix and it means I think students will get a really rigorous training. Students at QHAM are um, really enthusiastic and passionate and there is a very nice international environment and uh, so I think students at QHAM really gain from uh, the general context but also from interacting one to another and uh, um, they really um, are passionate about what they are studying and they contribute actively to uh, their own curriculum. I really love the way that QM focuses in on interactive and, and really collaborative processes both in research and in teaching and it's really great how we engage our students. I really love how we're capitalising on online resources and digital learning environments to allow students to attend class in person but also to capitalise on those kind of interactions that we can use contemporary society through these great technologies that we have available to us. So I think the great thing is there's learning inside and out of the outside of the classroom here at QM and that's really valuable for students. I think the opportunity to come to London is an amazing opportunity for staff, students, everybody. It's such a vibrant community with so many different elements to it. Um, with me working on immigration, East London is just a rich site for research, but also a great place to go and get a curry or something completely different at lunch. So I think it's, it's a really great environment, both at a personal level and at a professional level for me, but also for our students who come from a whole host of places all around the world here to this little hub and bring all their rich cultural experiences right here in East London.